Iran imposed new restrictions this week after the country's coronavirus cases hit a record high. More than 663,000 Iranians have been infected, and more than 37,000 have died. Elizabeth Palmer is in Tehran. There's a grim morning routine these days at Tehran's main cemetery. COVID victims arrive and are readied for burial. Iran is struggling with the worst coronavirus outbreak in the Middle East. To hear firsthand what it's been like, we asked Saeed Rahim Batayi, our Tehran producer, who's covered many stories with us and recently lost two friends to COVID. How long was it before people began to take it seriously? Well, I think in the beginning, maybe like everywhere else, they didn't take it as seriously as they should have. But Iran, like the rest of the world, watched its hospitals quickly fill up and recognized it faced a crisis with a uniquely dangerous dimension. The huge crowds of faithful Muslims who gather at Shia Islam's holy sites here. But officials took a hard look at the science and made a radical decision. I think it was hard for the government too. This is Islamic Republic, so they couldn't easily cancel all these religious gathering ceremonies, rituals. But they did close religious sites temporarily to slow the infection. This is for first time in 1400 years that they have closed down the holy shrines. And that was a big action to do. They didn't go for a full lockdown because the poor here can't afford not to work. Government was struggling with this idea if they put a lockdown, a very strict one, then probably people cannot uh, earn their livings. So they will be in difficulties. And I m myself heard a lot of people saying that they rather to die from COVID rather than uh, hunger. At Tehran's Pasteur Institute, scientists are coordinating the national testing network. Dr. Mostafa Salahi Vaziri's team managed to ramp up from 10 tests a day to 30,000. Very impressive, but not enough. And the problem isn't science, it's politics. Specifically, U.S.-led sanctions that have choked off Iran's access to foreign-made chemicals and equipment. So are there things that you would like to have that you can't get because of sanctions? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Most people have taken to wearing masks now, and large gatherings are forbidden. At the Beheshti Zara Cemetery, they've adapted too. Saeed Kal is the director. We follow government health guidelines to the letter, he says, and my entire staff is carefully tested. More than 150 COVID victims arrive every day at Beheshti Zara. I saw that shot of all the, the lines of the graves. It's, uh, s s it's um, s sobering. Yes, it was shocking, actually. It was sort of eye-opening, shocking, very sad. And as long as there's no end in sight to this pandemic, Iranians will carry on burying today's dead. <laughs> while bracing for tomorrow's. Elizabeth Palmer, CBS News, Tehran.